it's for your safety out there and the safety for everybody else. So if you're driving slow and people are laying on the horn behind you, you can't worry about that. That is going to be the number one cause of uh, insurance claims on motorhomes. A lot of people drive them no issue, but some people are very afraid. It takes a lot more to stop that motorhome. So we have to be always alert. Hey guys, MJ and Izzy from Endless RVing. So one concern we get a lot of times in comments of our videos, people are afraid to drive motorhomes. They're looking to get a new RV, they want a motorhome, but they're really afraid of it. But now we're having a video to address that. So in this video, we're gonna give you nine tips that will make driving a motorhome easy for anyone. All right, so we're out on the road, and the first thing we want to address is why motorhomes can be hard to drive. A lot of people drive them no issue, but some people are very afraid, or they are driving and they want to get a little bit better. So number one is- There's hikers on the road. Yes, there's hikers on the road right here. There you go. <laughs> the first thing is the size, the sheer size of it, the length, the width, and the height, right? So you are driving, you have to be very aware of your surroundings. That can be scary to a lot of people. It's not like you just hop in your car and go. You always have to be fully aware. Yeah, so for us, we're 37 feet long, we're 102 inches wide, and we're 12 eight high. Now, depending on what type of RV you get, these measurements can vary greatly, but the concepts we're gonna tell you in this video, they're gonna pretty much apply to motorhomes, towables, anything they're gonna to apply to it. And another thing too, besides the size, is actually, well, it is size also, but it's large. So in terms of stopping, when you tap your brake on your car, it's very easy. It's much different when you are driving a large motorhome because it takes a lot more to stop that motorhome. Right, we're 26,000 pounds or so. Some of these class A's are 50 plus thousand pounds. Now obviously they have have bigger air brakes and everything like that but it takes a lot more to stop something that's very large versus you know a sport tuned little sport car that you could stop on a dime you have to give yourself a lot of distance you have to drive a little bit differently so the next thing what are some of the easiest motorhomes to drive a lot of people go for the class b it probably is the easiest to drive that's you're very compact you're pretty much it's like a van so that's you're as close, as close to, a to a car as yep. you're gonna get class c's can also be a lot easier to drive but there are class c's that are quite long so not necessarily easy but in in order of if we were to rank, you know, level of uh, easiness to drive, we would look at definitely a B, a C, and then DA. Your, your A's. So next, couple quick things. How is a motorhome different than driving a car? It is quite different. So number one, you can't see in front of you. So in a car, you're driving, you can see everything that's happening. When you're in a motorhome, sorry for the bouncing here, the roads, <laughs> you are not seeing everything that's directly in front of you. And what, what do we mean by that? Now, this is kind of going to, once you start getting a little larger than the Class Bs, Class Cs, definitely Class A. So if you look in front of me, if you wanna show them, it looks like I can see everything in front of me, which I can, but the reality is I have about six feet of blind spot in front of me that I cannot see. And we've measured this out. Why is this important is because you have to be aware that you can't see directly in front of you. So that could be a small child, that could be a boulder, an that could animal. be a curb, that could be an animal. So when you're pulling out somewhere, it's gonna be a good idea to have somebody out there physically looking, or if you have some kind of camera system like we have that's directly mounted on the plate, then you can see pretty much directly at your bumper. But that is definitely something that you have to be aware of. The next thing we've actually mentioned in another video we did quite a while ago, we'll link that above, about tail swing. Now when you're in a car, you don't have tail swing. When you're driving a motorhome, you have to be really, really aware of what the rear of your motorhome is doing because it's not doing what the front of your motorhome is doing. Right, so tail swing is anything from the rear axle behind, and we're gonna demonstrate a little bit of that in this video a little bit later. That is gonna be the, the number one cause of uh, insurance claims on motorhomes is gonna be damage by tail swing. And when we demonstrate it, you're gonna understand a little better. This is really gonna be significant when you're like at the gas station or you're pulling and there's something real tight on your driver passenger side. You have to take that tail swing in consideration if you like your panels in 
the back to be intact. Now, feeding off of that, the next one actually has to do with fueling up. In a car, you can go to any gas station. When you're in a motorhome, you can't go to any gas station, and there will be many that you are unable to get into safely to be able to get in and get out. So you have to plan your stops accordingly. Sometimes we haven't planned, and then we're, you know, we're looking, and we're like, oh my God, we're not gonna fit in there, and we just have to keep driving until we see one, but it's really good to plan out so you know exactly that it's either a truck stop. In truck stops, you're gonna have an easy time because they're obviously built for larger vehicles. But be very, very careful when you need to fuel up that you are choosing a place that when, not only getting in, but it's the getting out that's the issue. Especially if you're towing. If you're towing something, you just added another 15, 20 feet, you have a lot more space that you need to maneuver. This is one of the advantages of diesel motorhomes is that you're going to pull into a truck stop and it's gonna be made obviously for big rigs so there'll be a lot more room. When you have a gasser, which most motorhomes are, a lot of times they're made for cars and, and that could become a problem like MJ said. Next one, don't go as fast in a motorhome. You just can't do it. We see cars on Route 287 in New Jersey. People are going 100 miles an hour, which they really shouldn't be. You're not going to be going as fast in a motorhome. If you are, it's quite dangerous. So you want to keep that speed down. Yeah, that's going to be uh, not only motorhomes, but also towables in general. We try to keep it at 70 and below uh, with the gas the way it is. We're going to be like probably even like 62. less. <laughs> Definitely, you just can't go as fast. It's not made for speed. You're in a big box. It's not aerodynamic. It's, it's just what it is. Next thing, when you're in a car, you can go anywhere. You don't have to plan out a trip in terms of what tunnels or bridges or roads that you can or cannot get down. In a motorhome, you have to be very aware of that because if you get stuck, I mean, the good thing about a motorhome, which I like better than when we had our trailer, it's kind of easy. You can back out a lot easier, but you don't want to get stuck. And we see, we've seen pictures and videos of where people had motorhomes and they went under a bridge and the top of the motorhome is shaved off. Yes. So one of the ways to avoid this, like MJ said, plan out your trip. There's also RV specific GPS units. Garmin makes one. We have the Rand McNally, which after the updates is not as horrible as it was. Right. I believe RV Trip Wizard, they have a RV GPS. So there's a variety of different things. It doesn't have to be RV specific. It could be a truck GPS, but something that you're going to input your weight, your height, and your width, because some roads have weight restrictions. Like where we live, there's a couple yep. of roads that's weight restrictions. You can't go on there. And the last thing, before we get to the really important tip, how a car is different than an RV, you have the right of way. At least we make ourselves have the right of way. When we're driving the motorhome, look, we're way bigger. It takes us longer to stop. It takes us wider to turn. It takes, everything's on a bigger scale. So you have the right of way and feel that. And again, I can't stress this enough. And we've said this in other videos that we've done. You cannot worry about what other people are doing. You have to be aware of what other people are doing. Of course, be a courteous driver, but you can't worry. Am I going too slow? Is the person behind me getting pissed off? Don't worry about pass. that. It's okay. Yeah, they can pass. They can wait it's okay your safety and everybody else's safety on the road is more important all right let's get into the nine tips the first one is going to be watch the wind the crosswind really affects motorhomes now the bigger and the heavier the motorhome is usually the less it affects it diesels will they have air for air suspension affects it a little bit less but on gassers which most motorhomes are it really does have an effect one of the ways we greatly re we didn't reduce we pretty much eliminated the wind effect as well as greatly increased our handling as you can see me driving we had liquid spring installed now liquid spring is a sponsor of our channel with that being said we've used this now for over a year it's by far the best upgrade that we've ever gotten you can upgrade your suspension system after Aftermarket. So you can have it factory installed. Tiffin on the open road, Rev, Holiday, Rambler, and Fleetwood on most of their gas models, including the Bounder, Southwind, Invicta, and Admiral. Nexus on the Triumph, Rebel, and Wraith, and the Phoenix Cruiser RVs, which we've done a number of videos on. That's a pretty popular RV. If you want more information about Liquid Spring, we advise you to contact Wayne Wells from Liquid Spring. His contact will be below. Ask him when you can go out on a free test ride on a demo vehicle, then you can make a decision for yourself. But that is one of the best upgrades we ever done on our motorhome has been liquid spring. So here are some other tips that you're going to want to keep in mind when driving a motorhome. You want to be aware of everything around you and everybody around you, especially when you're at campgrounds or you're in tight spaces. Why? Because you have things running around, kids, dogs, animals. Yeah, so where we live, there's always deer in the road. And actually this morning we saw a bear. So we have to be always alert, taking your eyes off the road for a second, just like with a car, it's the same thing. Yeah, so that's, that's one thing that you, you always 
always have to be on alert, even more so than with a car because you're driving such a bigger and heavier vehicle. We're gonna reiterate the next thing. You are bigger than everybody else on the road, so be courteous of other people around you, but you call the shots, right? Like, it's for your safety out there and the safety for everybody else. So if you're driving slow and people are laying on the horn behind you, you can't worry about that. Where we live, we live in a, an area, there's a lot of twists and turns. For example, right now, like this person to my left is trying to push out. I'm gonna let him go, I don't even care. But where we live, it's all turns, tight roads, and I take my time. So I'll look in, I'll look in the camera camera and I'll see we have a line of cars behind us. I don't care. They can wait. They can wait because I don't need to go into the drink because somebody wants to go super fast. It takes practice where you're really saying to yourself, it's okay. I'm in control. They can wait. So the next thing we want to talk about, be careful when going down hills. Now, if uh, you have a diesel motor home, you're, this is where you really want to use your uh, your engine braking. On a gas motor home, they have a tow haul mode. And what that does is as you start going down the de decline, it will use the transmission to slow you down. Why? Because since you're so heavy, you can heat up your brakes. You heat up your brakes, they don't work. And that's a bad, bad day. So when wherever we're going downhill, we live in a you know, kind of a hilly area, as you can see here. The tow haul mode's on, and uh, we go down there and we let the transmission do the, and the engine do the work. One of the most important things when you're driving a motorhome, and, and we kind of touched on this before, but we, we're going to reiterate it, you have to be aware of your height, your width, and your length, and your weight. Most accidents are gonna be caused because of this, I should say crashes, not knowing how high you are. When you're going down a road, you have to know your height, because you don't wanna take your roof off. You have to know your width, you have to know your weight, because there are roads that you're not going to be able to drive on. The next one is, th these are all super important, but keeping a large distance from your RV to the RV in front of you. And a lot of these can go for, you know, towables as well. So here, here's an example, all right? I need to slow down. So if I'm going super fast and I see an ambulance coming or whatever, it's gonna take me way longer. Somebody's in front of me, it's gonna take me a long time. If they slam on their brake, it's gonna take me a long time to stop in time. So keeping that distance, how many vehicles do they say to keep? Count to 10, 10 seconds, wherever a car is, should take you 10 seconds to get to that spot where they were and that's going to be enough time to stop accordingly the next one's going to be driving acceptable speed and that's even more significant now because of fuel costs but you can't drive 85 in a motorhome i mean i guess you can but you do kind of roll in the dice you want to try to keep like under 75 preferably under 70 you're going to be a lot safer doing that the thing we're going to talk about is when you park you want to be careful of surroundings around you above below we really advise that you have a spot or go out with you there are cameras equipped on a lot of motorhomes now there's no cameras equipped for up top they cannot see what's above you so that's definitely something you want to take into consideration let's go in here so we got a parking lot here now this is kind of a residential spot here so if i were going to park i would park right along here all right where there's like a, a row of spaces there's no other cars be really really careful so you're not affecting anybody else's parking uh, ability so the next thing that's really important is going to be this is not only driving a motorhome it's just driving in general don't drive distracted uh, wear your seatbelt i'm about to put mine on right now what do you mean by don't drive distracted not only your cell phone texting which is obvious eating your lunch eating your dinner having a beer paying attention to the dog that's on the dashboard fighting with your wife kids all of that stuff putting on makeup putting on makeup yeah all of that jesus hun Woo. all of that stuff it's the road not me <laughs> All that stuff can distract you and it only takes a split second before you're in a crash. So very important, especially when you have something this big. The faster you're going, the more things weigh, the higher chance there is of serious injury. All right, two very exciting things. Number one, we have a private Facebook group. We want you to join us. It's called Endless RVing RVers Coming Together. Also, we have a free monthly newsletter where we cover tips and tricks and our travels and all things ERV. We want you to join that too. The link to sign up for that is in the description below. So the next tip we're gonna give, and guys, we have a full video on how to drive a motorhome in way more detail. We'll link it above. But the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, having to take wide turns and accommodate the size of your motorhome. So I'm just gonna make a left turn out of this uh, lot here. You're gonna see how wide she's gonna go in order to accomplish the turn. So notice she is taking her time nice and wide. She's going into the second lane really wide. And now she's gonna take the other turn and back into the lot. She's gonna take everything nice and wide to get in to the next lot. 
So the next thing that we're talk, going to talk about, bonus tip, we said we'll, a little bit early in the video is tail swing. What is tail swing? Essentially, you see everything from this wheel back is going to be tail swing. Why is that important? Because when you're pulling out somewhere, you have to account for this right here. So these cones and bucket are going to represent like something that doesn't move, a solid wall, concrete pillar, whatever it is. We're going to simulate, we're at a gas station, whatever, MJ has to get out of this gas station, make a turn left. Instead of her making a hard left, she's going to move forward first, clear the obstacle, and make up for that tail swing. But I really want you to see it in real time. So she's in the driver's seat, I'm gonna to radio to her to start. She's gonna show you how to do it. All right, hon, go ahead, we're running. So she's going to go forward, she's gonna make sure she clears that bucket in that area. Now start making the left. And you're gonna see, you see how that, how that tail went right over the line? That would have been on the concrete wall if she didn't take that tail swing into consideration. So that's a really important one. That is the biggest claim for motorhomes is gonna be damaged to those rear panels. So we hope these tips helped out improving your driving a motorhome and maybe take some of that edge off any fear that you may have. In the comments below, let us know what are some tips that you have for driving your motorhome. And from Izzy and myself, it's the journey of a lifetime. We will see you on the road.